Oh my God. Oh, Lucy. Oh my God. Oh, Lucy, I'm so sorry for parting in like this. You, you would. You would never have a brandy, would you? Oh, of course I would. Here, love, come and sit down. Vera, whatever's happened? I, I was breathing and dozed off, and I had this, this terrible dream. Oh, Lucy, I dreamt I saw another pantyhose murder. But, Lucy, this wasn't an ordinary nightmare. It, it seemed so real. And I saw the people. I saw... I saw Marilyn. I actually saw Marilyn being, being strangled. Oh, love. <laughs> Well, that means you saw the, the murder, too. Yes, Lizzie. Yes, it does. But, Mummy, I thought you said you weren't missing Daddy at all. Oh, I'm not, dear, not at all. I'm having a lovely time without him. But why are you so depressed? I, I expect it's just a stage I'm going through. Oh, Marilyn, what am I going to do? Do you think he's really left me for good? Mm, looks very much like it, Mummy. I tried to warn you about Alderman Mrs. Bullock, and you wouldn't listen. But I never for a moment thought Daddy would leave me for another. After all, we've been together for over 20 years. Oh, Marilyn, what am I going to do with myself? Well, you'll just have to be very brave and find lots of other interests to fill your life. Hi, Marilyn. Good evening, Mrs. MacDonald. Oh, hello, Michael. I expect you've had your tea already. Ah, oh, yes, thanks. I had a snack at uni. And I suppose you have, too. I ate early in the wine barn here until closing. Oh, dear. What is it? Oh, nothing. I, I'll just have to eat on my own again tonight. Oh, hell. Poor Mrs. Mac. Daddy's a creep going off with that old man, Mrs. Bullock. I'll never forgive him. But I'll ever see him again. Oh, any news of Dudley if they caught him? Oh, yet? not that I've heard of. The Fink fancied being him all the time. I still can't believe it. Oh, well, he ran off, didn't he? That was an admission of guilt. He must have known he was going to be arrested. Yeah. Anyway, I always suspected him. You big lie. You never did. I did so. Look, I'll nip over and keep your mother company while she has a tea, but I'll be back at nine o'clock to walk you home. And, Marilyn? Yes? I'll have something very important to tell you about a decision I've come to. A decision? Yeah. Probably the most important decision of my life. Oh, good evening. Can I help you? I hope so, darling. I would like to buy some Russian caviar. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm afraid I've discontinued that. Oh, what a pity. Caviar is my favorite food. I practically live on it. Oh, regrettably, your taste is not shared by the majority of my customers. However, I do have some lump fish roe, which most people find quite an acceptable substitute. Substitute? Nonsense. There is no substitute for caviar. Oh, well, as I was saying, I am sorry. Is there anything else? Mm, yes, nothing. Thank oh, you. excuse me, if you, if you happen to live in the locality, I could make a point of ordering some for you, especially. Oh, would you, darling? That would be most kind. I would buy lots every week. Oh, I'll make a note of it. Uh, Miss... Uh, Tanya Schnoskevitska. Oh, yes, uh, Russian caviar. And your name, please? Uh, Fuller, Mrs. Frida Fuller. I call you Frida. How do you do, Frida? How do you do? You shall see plenty of me from now on, especially if I work next door in Norma's bar. Oh, the Whitakers are employing you? Well, I've not yet decided. But you are looking for a job. Why that? Well, I have a vacancy here. I take it that you have had serving experience. You know how to handle customers. Handle customers. Darling, I've worked for two years in New York, in Tiffany's of Fifth Avenue, selling jewelry and fine furs. So I think I can sell a garlic sausage, yes? Yeah? Oh, yes. Uh, well, excellent. Well, in that case, Miss, uh, 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 perhaps I could persuade you to come and work for me. Oh, fair. Well, confident help is very hard to come by. Whatever the Whitakers have offered, I'll top it. Moreover, you'll have all your evenings free. Ah, my evenings free? Now, this I like. Da, I will consider your offer, Frida. I will think about it more seriously. I'm oh, sorry to make such a fool of myself, Lucy. Oh, very well, you're trying to laugh it off now. But don't you think you ought to go to the police? What's the point? A silly dream. But if you think that the dream might come true... The police don't believe in dreams, Lucy. I had enough trouble over stolen paintings. I don't want them thinking I'm a complete nutcase. But this is more serious, love. You dreamt you saw Marilyn being strangled. Knowing you and your dreams, well, at least I think that she ought to be told. It would only alarm her. It might prevent another Pantyo's murder. Oh, Lizzie, I can't take this dream seriously, awful as it was. I'm not considering who it was I saw doing it. Well, won't you even tell me? No, Lizzie. Oh, I'm sorry, but it's too absurd. The person I saw strangling Marilyn McDonald with a pair of pantyhose could not possibly be a killer. I don't believe it, neither would you, if I told you. So what's the point? 
<laughs> no, it's too ridiculous for words. Ah, oh. oh, for goodness sake, come along, you two, please, please. I mean, if I am left here to prepare dinner single-handed, then the very least you can do is to come along when you're cold. Oh, there you oh. go, darling. We've been delivering groceries. and My feet are killing me. Ah, oh, for goodness sakes. You two, you look like a veritable pair of raggle-taggle gypsies. I mean, when I think how miraculous Lady Betsy White looked today at Mr. Cleo Horton's luncheon party, I really do wonder that I can bear to sit the same table as you two. Oh, golly, Moses, Dory, it's hard yak of lugging those trolleys around the supermarket. I was all in by the time I got back from the number 96 lot. We'll help the streamliners flow. Getting home at 6.30 is no good. Yeah, well, we didn't leave till after midday, love. Anyway, we might get through quicker tomorrow with Dory to help us. Oh, well, of course, I'm not too sure that I should be able to do that, though. I mean, Mr. Claire Horton was only saying today... Oh, I'm not up about that... Mr. Claire Horton, Dory. I'm sick of the sound of a name. Oh, well, you're only jealous, Blade, because now I am a member of High Cathy Society. Well, no nicking off tomorrow. We need your help. Oh, well, yes, of course, uh... Yeah, I might have to babysit for Mr. Gloria Devine, you know. You oh. can't do that, dear. She thinks Les is you. He must have done a bonzer job of impersonating Dory, eh, love? Yeah, and took the babysitting in East Drive. Oh, no doubt, Herbert. But, I mean, this ridiculous charade cannot be allowed to continue. Oh. Now, Dory, Mr. Wick was only doing you a favour. Yeah, think yourself lucky he agreed to go again. Mm. No, for goodness sakes, look, don't misunderstand me. I mean, I am very grateful for what Mr. Whittaker has done. I am merely trying to point out that there is no substitute for the real thing. And after all, I am the bony Fido, Mrs. Evans, whom Lady Mendel recommended, not Mr. Whittaker. However good his disguise may be. Well, if you're not happy with the situation, Dory, you've only got yourself to blame. You should have stuck to your first booking instead of gallivanting out to Mrs. Horton's luncheon party. Oh, for goodness sakes, Flo, there are some invitations one simply cannot mm. refuse. I mean, that's a well-known fact. Hello? Oh, Mrs. Horton. Oh, Mrs. Horton. Shh. Oh, yeah. She's here. You want to speak to her? Huh? Oh, all right. I'll ask her. Mrs. Horton, she's uh, making out a check for your waitressing services today. Wants to know whether she'll make it out in your name or to uh, dig up a treasure. Oh, Brenda, darling. So glad I captured before you closed. I have been thinking seriously about your offer of a job. Oh, yes. And have you come to a decision? Da, I'm sorry it took so long, but I had to consult my astrologer. So much depends on the stars, you know? Oh, indeed. Oh, da. Once in Budapest, I'm working in the Krakasov Brothers Circus as a lion tamer. A lion tamer? Da. And one day my astrologer tells me, don't go on tonight, Tanya. The stars are against you. And did you? Oh, yet. I went all to my partner, Nikolai Nikolaevich. And guess what happened? What? When the moment came, for him to put his head in the lion's mouth. Plop! Dear me. It was Nikolai's fault. He forgot to feed them first. Such an absent-minded boy. Anyway, don't worry. Saturn is in the ascendant, so it is fine for me to work here. I start tomorrow, okay? Oh, yes, that will be most satisfactory, Miss... Oh, Erickson. just call me Tanya, darling. It makes life so much simpler. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Must drive you around the bend watching these things spinning round and round all day. I'd rather be here than stuck in an office. Or in the town hall where Daddy tried to get me anything would be better than that. Mr. Sutcliffe. Oh, hello, Marilyn, love. Oh, Michael, thank heaven you're here. Look, love, you can go home now. I'll close up. What? Come on, off you go. Go and get your bag and your coat and things. Oh, but there's only 20 minutes to closing. Why the panic? Off you go, and no argument. I'm the boss mind. All right, but I don't know what all the fuss is about. Go on, off you go, and be a good girl. Hey, has something happened, Mrs. Sutcliffe? Aye. It has, Michael. Vera's... Vera's had one of her flashes. You know, like the time she dreamt she knew where the paintings were, remember? Mm-hmm. Well, this time, she dreamt about the Pantios murderer. What? She dreamt that she saw Marilyn being strangled. Oh, my God! Shh, shh. Don't say anything to her. Just take her straight home, eh? Yeah, I was going to. Look, did Mrs. Collins say she dreamt who the murderer was, too? Aye, she did, but she, she won't tell me that. Oh, Michael, it's not that I really believe these dreams of Vera's. I mean, I think it's not but coincidence if they come true. But still, I mean, you can't be too sure, no. can you? It's best to play safe. Shh, shh, shh. All right, then. Ready? Yes, but I wish you'd tell me what it's all about. Look, I just wanted to make sure that Michael was here to see you safely home. You could have phoned. 
I, and knowing you, you could have told me any old thing. Now, couldn't you? Now, come on, up you go. The hey, ball, come on, let's you? go. Hey, remember, I had something important I wanted to tell you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Night, Mrs. Night. Ta-ra. You don't think it's too late? Give us a decker. Oh, it's only quarter to nine, love. Mrs. Mac won't be in bed yet. Oh, all right, then. Even with Mr. Mac away, we should still get an order, you know. Michael's moving into the flat. Oh, yeah. You reckon she'd come with us on the deliveries? Oh, we can only ask. Let's see if we can get an order. Come on, give another rat as a tap. Hello, love. Oh, it's only you. I thought perhaps it was Daddy. Well, I'm sorry, love. It's just her and me. Yeah, good evening, Mrs. McDonald. We've uh, started this delivery service, you see. And, yeah, uh, goodies from the supermarket. All part of Dig Up a Treasure. This is our card. Uh, you know, I thought you might like to make use of the service. Save you lots of shopping trips. Well, could I think about it some other time? Say, tomorrow morning, Pat. Oh, Daddy! Good evening, Mother. Mrs. Patterson. Mr. Evans. Oh, Daddy, you've come back! Oh! oh yes. May I perhaps come in? You know, if I was that Edie McDonald, I would send that husband of hers packing. I really would. Running off like that and with another woman to boot. And then to come crawling back with his tail between his legs. Oh, yes, indeed, I would send him packing. You know, I wouldn't even want to know where he'd been. Where did he go, by the way? Oh, I don't know, love. I didn't stick around to find out. Oh, we thought it better to slip off quietly, more or less. <laughs> You know, I really don't know what the world is coming to these days when this permissive society with all its laxative morals reaches out and infects such a man as Reginald P. MacDonald. You know, someone I have always looked upon as the very pillar of, of, of respectability. Oh, fancy him having a candle stein affair. And with a lady alderman, well, I need to say. Yeah, it is surprising. Still, I suppose it takes all sorts. Well, Mrs. Mac seemed happy enough to have him back all the, all the time. I suppose I'd probably forgive and forget. <laughs> well, I most certainly wouldn't do that had it have been you who'd been misbehaving in this uninhabited way, Herbert Evans. You would never hear the last of it, I can assure you, but never. Running off from his wife like that, <laughs> leaving her to manage hearth and home, and a teenage daughter without any sort of masculine assistance whatsoever. She's had masculine assistance. She had a man living in the flat. What? Yeah, Michael Bartlett. Oh, Flo Patterson, are you trying to tell me that Edie McDonald... Oh, no, 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 Dory. Michael is Marilyn's boyfriend. Yes, he's moved in with the McDonald's. What? He moved out of the Sutcliffe's. They had some sort of a tip. Oh, for goodness sakes, why wasn't I told? I mean, as concert of number 96, I really do feel I should know who is living with whom in this building. Now, should I not? Well, now you know. Anyway, look, we should be concentrating on getting this shopping service of ours off the ground. Now, you are coming with us today, aren't you? Yeah, I checked with Leslie. He's all set to do your babysitting. Uh, yeah, well, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, uh, I'm still in two minds about that. But you're going to have to let Les go, Dory. Yes, if you went, Dory, well, Mrs Devine would know that she was tricked yesterday. She'd be terribly offended. Too right yeah. she would. And the same goes for Lady Mendel. And you don't want to get into her bad books, do you? Mother, once and for all, I spent the week alone at a motel in Woiwai. I hope you and Alderman Mrs Bullock had a lovely time together. Mother, Alderman Mrs Bullock is in Queensland. I was in Woiwai, she was in Queensland. Why was she in Queensland if you were in Woiwai? Oh, Mummy, Alderman Mrs Bullock may have been after Daddy, but he's rejected her. Can't you see he's telling the truth? I'm sure that's so, Mrs MacDonald. Well, then why ever did you leave me, Daddy? Mother, my purpose in leaving you, without noticing so abruptly, was to teach you a well-deserved lesson. A lesson, Daddy? Yes, a lesson which I trust you've now learned. Oh, what sort of a lesson? How can I have learned a lesson if I don't know what I'm supposed to have learned? Mother, I left you because you were neglecting your domestic duties and, as a consequence, neglecting me, a situation no self-respecting husband could possibly allow to continue. Well, time and tide, Mother. I must away. Daddy's right, Mummy. You let sneaky Alderman Mrs Bullock put you on all these committees to keep you tied up so she could have Daddy to herself. Yes, furthermore, Mother, I insist that you tender your resignation to these various bodies. Oh, but you said they'd help your career. Edith, in all things, there is a golden mean. Well, I thought I was doing the right thing. Can't I even stay on the Gumnut and Banks here Preservation Committee? We'll discuss it further at lunchtime. Oh, but I do so love wildflowers. Sauce is here, tin fruits here, soups here and jams here. Oh, wonderful, Tanya. I can see you're very quick on the uptake. Everything's going to work out fine. But of course, darling, it always does with me. <laughs> There's just one thing I ought to mention. It's, it's about the, the locals. Oh, what is that? Well, there seems to be some sort of silly boycott going on. Boycott? Don't worry, Mrs. Puller. I soon bring you plenty of customers, especially men. I have a special magnetism. You will see. Well, just ordinary common garden politeness will satisfy me. Now, do you think that you can manage on your own while I go and unpack some deliveries? Certainly. Good. I'll leave you to it, then. 
from flat number three. Oh, you live here? Sure do. <laughs> and what would you like her? Uh, some nice Russian caviar? Or some truffles? Or we have some delicious imported snails. Snails? Oh, no, 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 don't go for that incontinent of Tucker. <laughs> oh, well, what would you like then, darling? A nice Australia pie. We have plenty of pie. Oh, no, no, no pie, thanks. I just come here for some birdseed from Mr. Perky. <laughs> Mr. Perky? Yeah, uh, the birdseed you sell is the only one he likes, more or less. Then your friend shall have his birthday. Thank you. You must always shop here, darling. I'll be very sad if you do not. You will. I tell you a little secret. Mm -hmm. I love men with bald heads. You do? <laughs> to me, this is irresistible. I cannot resist to pat him <laughs> on the head. <laughs> you know, you remind me of my Uncle Nikita. Oh, my mother had an uncle, oh. and his name was Uncle Nikita. Really? <laughs> he was not here. Oh, oh, oh. Well, it's Dory. This should come out from behind well, the counter this was... very minute. How dare you play with a strange young lady behind my back and in this shop of all places and who pray are you? I am Miss Tanya Schnoskovetska. He's your husband, darling? Yes, he is. And don't you darling me, you brazen hussy, you. No, what on earth going on? Oh, good morning, Mrs. Evans. Can I be of assistance? No, Mrs. Fuller, you may not. I do not count myself among your clientele. And as for this assistant of yours, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Peter, or whatever she chooses to call herself, I will thank her to keep her conniving hands off my husband. Oh, Mrs. Evans, really? What nonsense. Nonsense, Mrs. Fuller. I will have you know that I was passing here and surprised this, this Jezebel into interfering with my husband and in public what is more really what with the Whittaker's wine bar on one side and this den of iniquity on the other I just do not know what number 96 is coming to come along Herbert we will purchase our order at the supermarket that's right you try and put the blame on a poor defenseless bird you oh you Judas you Vera oh, you are an old worry guts Michael's with me all the time now. He won't even let me stay in the flat alone. Just so long as you realise that until the Pantyhurst murderer has caught any young girl in this area, must watch it step. It's sweet of you to be concerned about me, really it is. But don't worry, I'll be all right. Well, how's everything on this side then? Fine, Mrs. Sutton. Good. Look, Marilyn, love, could you make these up into a nice parcel for Mrs. McIntyre? She said she'd come in for them about noon. Certainly. On oh, that reminds me. Would it matter if I got back from lunch a bit late today? You see, Michael and I have a sort of special date. Oh, of course not. Just so long as Michael's with you, though. Oh, he will be. Thanks, Mrs. Sutton. Oh, it's awful, isn't it? Just to think that somebody's prowling around looking to murder a nice young girl like that. Have you told her about your dream yet? No, listen, I'm not going to. I just gave her a general warning about being careful. Well, shouldn't you at least tell Sergeant Short? He wouldn't believe me. Oh, no, but better safe than sorry. I mean, some of your dreams have been known to come true now, haven't they? Yes. Well, then, if I dreamed what you dreamed, and then it came true and I'd done out to prevent it, well, I couldn't live with it. I'll tell you straight. Pleasant fare as this sweet and sour may be, Mother. I expect to return to our normal domestic routine by tomorrow. That is to say, a sustaining meal prepared by yourself and ready to serve at 107 precisely. Oh, but I love eating out, Daddy. I got so used to it while you were away. Nonsense, Edith. How could you possibly have afforded to eat out for a whole week? <laughs> oh, I didn't pay, dear. Everyone at 96 has been so wonderful. They took it in turns to escort me out. Mr. Whitaker even took me to a fancy dress ball, only it wasn't. Wasn't what? A fancy dress ball. But it was all right because we came back here and they didn't mind about Dracula. But what are you talking about? Dracula, dear. Mr. Whitaker went as Count Dracula. I got such a frightful shock when he opened the door with his teeth. Opened the door with his teeth? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I opened the door and then I fainted, I think. You see, I thought he was the pantyhose murderer. Oh, but everyone's been so wonderful to me, dear. I never knew I had so many wonderful friends. And I've decided that from now on, that's the way I want it. Yeah, for pity's sake, what are you babbling about? Oh, I almost forgot, Daddy. Hmm? Sergeant Short called yesterday before you got back. And he said to tell you, if I saw you, that he wants to talk to you. Wants to talk to me? What on earth for? I've already told him all I know. Oh, no, that was before you went to war, war dear. You see, the sergeant thinks it's very suspicious that you disappeared like that all of a sudden without any warning. Suspicious? Yes, well, we didn't know where you'd gone, Daddy. So you better go round to the police station as soon as you've finished your lunch and explain everything. I shall do no such thing. I have nothing further to add by way of evidence. Oh, no, I think you better, Daddy. Otherwise, they'll come and get you. 
You're definitely needed for questioning. Oh, fair go, Dory. I only went in the deli for some bird seed. I told you. Oh, a likely story. Well, you were all over that assistant when I walked in, and don't you try and deny it. Oh, belt up, Dory. Look, if anybody's got any cause to be for Turbin, I see in us how we did most of the work. Oh, fiddlesticks. It is not. You left me to do the Paradise Street and the Chestnut Lane orders. And then I came back here with a trolley full of stuff for number 96, and yours was half empty. Nearly did me back in lugging that thing up the stairs. Me too. And where were you this morning, Dory? Yeah. Well, it just so happened that I was delivering these cards around that Mr. Whittigan so kindly printed for us. Yeah, well, a handful of cards is not heavy as a, as a trolley full of groceries. Oh, no. Anyway, I am pulling my weight in this because publicity is just as important in a business venture as is sales. Now, that is a well-known fact, though, Patterson. Fair enough. My turn to do the publicity this hour, Buck, and you can do the sale. <laughs> oh, really? And what do you find so humorous about the cards? The end is never far away, so buy your graveyard plot tonight. What? <laughs> you know what he's done? He's printed out publicity cards on the back of those cards that he had when he was selling those cemetery plots. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose you could remain on the committee of the Gumnut and Banks of Preservation Society if your heart is set on it. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Mm. Oh, don't forget about the police station. Sergeant Short will be very cross if you don't go. Not only shall I go, but I shall also take the opportunity while it's there. <laughs> oh, Marilyn, I was just about to tell your mother. I shall be seeing Sergeant Short this afternoon. I shall insist on his reinforcing police security about the premises. In any case, I think it's best if you move right away oh, from here for the time. Oh, Daddy, we... do be quiet for a moment. Michael and I've got something so important to tell you. What I have to say concerns your personal safety. Nothing could be more important than that. Until this pantyhose murder is brought to justice, I think you should go and stay with your Aunt Evelyn. Oh, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm <laughs> staying right here. And lady, as your father, I insist that I have a right to know what's best for you. Mr. MacDonald, you don't have to worry about Marilyn anymore. I'll be taking care of her. She's my responsibility now. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, it's true, Daddy. You see, Michael and I just got married. <laughs> <laughs>